These are brass pieces left over from the brass, copper, zinc, and acid series. They were everything that didn't get dissolved. So we're going to try to dissolve them in hydrochloric acid. I am 303. Thank you for watching. Warning, be careful with hydrochloric acid. So we're going to start off with about 50 milliliters of 2 molar technical grade hydrochloric acid. There was no immediate reaction and this is about 15 minutes into it. You could see very few bubbles indicating that anything was being dissolved into the solution. So we let it sit for about an hour, then transferred it to the super scientific hot plate to see if heat would help anything else get dissolved. After about another hour, really not much had changed. There were no major obvious reactions. The only thing that was different was the copper was a little bit of a lighter color, which may indicate that the outside was covered in something that dissolved into the hydrochloric acid, but it just didn't give enough of a visual cue. So after a little while longer, we decided to add some hydrogen peroxide to make the copper and whatever else was left in there dissolve into the hydrochloric acid. The hydrogen peroxide will act as an oxidizer and convert the copper into copper oxide and then the hydrochloric acid will be able to dissolve it. You can see the almost instant color change from clear to a pale blue-green. And here you can see that there's a vigorous reaction taking place as the copper and probably zinc is getting dissolved into the solution. The reaction started slowing down, so we added another about 40 milliliters of acid to the solution and an equal amount of hydrogen peroxide. So we allowed it to boil down for a little while and it became this nice dark green color, probably from the copper chloride. And then we decided to add some more hydrogen peroxide to try to dissolve the rest of the material. We only added a little bit at a time to keep it from overflowing at this point. After letting it go for a while, we even added some more hydrogen peroxide. And here's a better view from the top. After a while, it started to get a little bit cloudy. So I decided to let it settle and decant off this liquid and start with some fresh hydrochloric acid and hydrogen peroxide. That's about 50 milliliters of the acid and about 50 milliliters of the hydrogen peroxide. And you can see here, we started to get a pretty good reaction going. And this actually took quite a long time, but at this point we got everything dissolved. So we took this fresh solution and added to the liquid that we had separated off. And it's really kind of cool how it went from a green, cloudy solution to a clear, more blue solution. So we turned up the heat and started to reduce it. You can see it's got a good boil going there. And the volume is going down. So we got it reduced to about 300 milliliters, which is about 
or target volume and you can see the color is more green now so we let it cool off and ran it through a filter just to see if there were any solids that we could filter out to get ready for the next step and then we wanted to do a pH test here to see if it was still acidic enough and we got a very quick very dark red which means that it's probably pretty close to one very acidic so next we're going to add some zinc to the solution I've got a couple little pieces here they're just a couple grams a piece but hopefully they'll be able to displace all the copper that's in there and here's one more just for good measure it was hard to see through the dark green so I tried to get a shot from underneath the beaker and you can see the displacement reaction taking place and it looks like that's brown copper instead of the silvery zinc that we put in there. And then about an hour later, it started to look like this. You can see it's almost clear. That looks like a big pile of copper, but you can still see some reaction going on in the pile. In about another half hour, you could see that all of the zinc was dissolved, except where you can see the obvious hydrogen bubbles coming up in a couple of places. A little while later, the reaction stopped completely, indicating that all the zinc dissolved. The smaller beaker here was what I decanted off, and the larger beaker contains wash water for the copper sediment. There you can see the copper. I ran the clear solution through a paper filter a couple of times to make sure that we got all of the suspended copper out of it. We took this clear filtered solution and put it back on the super scientific hot plate to try to add some heat to it. So it appeared that all of the copper was out of the solution. So we thought that if we added some aluminum, like these couple little can tabs here, to the solution that it should precipitate out some zinc and then we'll be finished. We got a vigorous reaction right away like you would expect dropping aluminum into hydrochloric acid. Then things got a little weird. Apparently all the copper wasn't out of the solution. So the aluminum started displacing copper and I didn't see any obvious zinc precipitation. If this were a gold solution, we could have tested it using stannous chloride or tin chloride. But at this point, I'm not aware of any test to see if you have copper still in the solution. And I was only going by the color cue. So in theory, the aluminum, since it's more reactive, yes, it should have displaced any copper that was left, but then it should have displaced the zinc but it didn't, and I found this very frustrating. So I took what I had left and stored it for the night. From letting it sit overnight, it looked like nothing had happened. The aluminum basically passivated in the zinc chloride solution. So I'm going to let this zinc chloride solution evaporate. And if I can get some crystals to grow, I will make an update. The end.